Hi, thanks for joining me today. I wanted to talk about uh, cholesterol-lowering medications, particularly as it relates to people who uh, are worried about their cholesterol. Um, obviously, um, those people that have heart disease uh, then are currently being treated, you know, I think you have to follow your physician's uh, orders. Um, but for those of you that don't have heart disease or any uh, identification thereof, uh, but merely have high cholesterol, then I, I want to talk to you about what some of your options are. And I think in the first instance, you know, everyone would agree that any uh, non-drug options has to be the go. If I had high cholesterol and if I was worried about it, then, you know, the first thing I would do is probably get a CT scan done because if my arteries are squeaky clean, well then um, I'll just get on with my life and not even worry about it because there's many people who um, have very, very healthy arteries and therefore the fact they've got high cholesterol is not an issue. Let me tell you about my own experiences in people taking um, some of the cholesterol-lowering medications. The, the conditions that we see, the highest um, percentages would be, say, muscle uh, inflammation, uh, severe muscle uh, problems, and this is a, is a is probably runs at about 20% of the population who take cholesterol medications, and that's why uh, many of them stop taking it. Uh, even though the statistics imply that it's only 2% people affected by uh, muscular problems, uh, that's 2% of the people that are bothered to actually lodge a, um, a complaint. Most people, when they have a problem like that, don't do anything. They'll just stop the medication, they'll throw it in the rubbish bin and, and, and get on with their lives. A handful may tell their doctor and a very small group of those doctors may tell the authorities that we have a problem. At the end of the day, the records show 2%. The reality is that 20%, at least of the population, who start on Lipitor um, will have muscle damage. Now, for those of you who do take um, uh, Lipitor and Crestor and the other drugs, I would say to you that if you do take them, then you should take coenzyme Q10 because that's a very important nutrient um, that uh, in, the, in the metabolic pathways of the body um, it gets basically annihilated, and so you need to bring that back in as a supplement to protect yourself. That's well recorded. Um, you'll find that recorded in, in all across the net, so there's nothing new about that, but I know a number of people don't do it and therefore pay the price. I think you can lessen some of the damage that cholesterol-lowering medication does by taking coenzyme Q10, okay? Now, in terms of, of what I've seen, well, I've all sorts of wonderful uh, issues. I've, um, in terms of muscle damage, I think the, the ones that are really disappointing is I've seen people, say, in their 40s and 50s, where uh, they take, start on the cholesterol-lowering medication, and suddenly uh, they might be active and playing squash or jogging or, or doing a lot of walking. Suddenly, they find that they're not doing those things because the muscle pain is, is becoming too severe. Um, and, uh, and some of them have stopped altogether and it seems to me that if exercise is an important point for our health and well-being, then to displace that with a drug that stops them from exercising and on top of that the drug uh, actually damages the liver, which is why people starting cholesterol-lowering medications need to have liver tests on a regular basis. It just doesn't equate in my mind that um, you know, you're better off doing the exercises and getting on with your life, uh, if provided you haven't had any uh, issues to do with heart disease to date. So, in summary, as I was saying before, if you don't have any heart disease issues, then um, really, it's it, it, you should get good guidance. But if you are taking medications at the moment because you've had heart disease, then you probably need to either stay with your current practitioner, or alternatively, if you want to get off the medication find yourself a physician that understands what your other options are because when you think about it to put your entire life in the hands of one single practitioner who may in fact you know be be overzealous with their prescriptions you're probably doing yourself some damage I think it's also one of the things I've seen which is a borderline crazy in my mind is I've seen that the the dosage of medications given to people is not index for their weight. If you have a very large man uh, and you prescribe them the same amount of cholesterol-lowering medication as you do to an 80-year-old, very low-weight, um, frail woman, then, you know, uh, that really is a, is a very, very uh, atrocious thing to see happen. 
other cases that I've seen, uh, I've talked about in terms of drugs that sometimes affect younger people, this peripheral neuropathy, losing the sensations at the end of your, of your hands and feet, remembering that, that, that the, the neurons which run all the way through, and the human brain is, is, is made up of neurons, that cholesterol is a fundamental molecule, and if you lower it too far, then you can see degradation of the neurons, and hence why people can lose a lot of their feeling. Uh, in many cases, it's irreversible, and this is a very, very sad thing. So uh, that's one of the side effects that we see, um, which is a very severe side effect. It's even worse, of course, if the degradation occurs up here. And you know, I remember one one lady was telling me that her husband, who was around about 50, started taking cholesterol lowering medication. He ran a business, very successful. They owned their own home, and they were looking forward to retirement one day and, and being very, very uh, healthy and happy. And then uh, this particular t uh, bloke, this, this guy was prescribed because his cholesterol was a little bit elevated. It was actually, in my view, it was absolutely normal. Um, and within two years, um, he lost a lot of his cognitive function, uh, his ability to think uh, and remember short-term things. And um, sometimes we read about this in a magazine where it sort of says, oh, cholesterol-lowering me medications can affect short-term thinking. And some people think that, that what that means is, is that it's a short-term problem. No, no. It's a long-term problem of short-term memory. Big difference. And what that means is that the person can't remember what you spoke about five minutes earlier. It's like Alzheimer's. And so we're seeing people quite young who are losing their jobs. In this particular uh, case of this particular fellow, his business went, uh, fell over. Um, he, uh, uh, his, his wife said to me that he tried for a long time to kind of cover this, this, this losing of his uh, thinking ability and ultimately um, the business fell over, they then lost their house, everything that they were looking forward to in retirement disappeared and when I spoke to this lady they were renting a house and everything was gone and she said to me, Frank, she said to give you an idea of of, of what, it's, uh, what it's like. She said, this, this morning, I said to my husband, would you go and get the mineral water from the back of the car? And after 10 minutes, he hadn't come back, so I went looking for him, and he was sitting in the passenger seat of the car. What had happened was he went to the car, he had the keys, he got there and suddenly forgotten why he was there. He therefore assumed they were going for a drive in the car, he got in the passenger seat because he can no longer drive a car because he, he gets lost, he doesn't know where he is anymore. And he was sitting there. He had been sitting there for five minutes, obviously waiting for his wife to arrive to go for a drive. And she said, there's an example of the fact that his short-term memory is gone. Mother Nature gave us cholesterol as a fundamental molecule in the human body for wonderful health. If we're going to play with it, and be godlike and try to drive it down, then all sorts of strange things will start happening, including increasing the risk of, of other diseases. Um, and one of them, by the way, is an increase in the risk of a hemorrhage, a hemorrhage stroke, because as I've mentioned to you in an earlier conversation, that the repair of the arteries, where the, the lining of the artery uh, weakens, we will see a little bit of cholesterol laid down at that point to strengthen up the arteries, to stop them literally from bursting. And so if we reduce the cholesterol and stop some of those natural processes, because as we get older, some of the arteries do weaken. And so the need by the body to strengthen those, right, if we remove that capability, then we shouldn't be surprised that, so that one day we, um, we have a hemorrhage stroke occurring where the person is dead because we've weakened the arteries. So there's all sorts of consequences here. I don't think we can take it willy-nilly and say, oh, you know, reducing cholesterol and we've got good health. That's not the case at all. That, um, that statistically, at the end of the day, there's all sorts of risks involved here. And so I would strongly encourage you to speak to a practitioner that has the smarts to be able to guide you with good advice as to whether this is an issue with you at all because if not, then I would just get on with my life and enjoy it.